Hello. We got that in Audacity. <laughs> this is perfect. This is perfect for the PC Gamer Show. We're gonna like this is this is the Twitch exclusive restart of the show. Okay, Hello, everybody. What, what just happened? What did and you welcome to the PC Gamer Show. But Windows updates happened right before. Mm, <laughs> right. Classic. So I, uh, I thought everything was good to go, uh, but everyone in the chat is telling me it wasn't good to go. You missed all of our goddamn perfect like introductions and jokes, and uh, now we're starting over. I'll keep that in there for the audio We're, listeners. We are never going to win a podcast Pulitzer at this rate. <laughs> We're not. This setup is so... I'm so tired of it, you guys. I'm so tired of it. We're, we're moving digital won't soon. Have to, won't. Uh, but hello, everyone. And okay, the glut of people are here now anyway. So maybe it was for the better. Uh, let us know if... Okay, Windows update. People are hearing us now. Good, good, good. Hello, and welcome to the PC Gamer Show for <laughs> May 30th. 20 great teen still great despite a rocky start here <laughs> let's say everything we said when the mics were uh, not hot what was my joke i was um uh, something about console games and right and, you belittled uh, me i belittled uh, you uh, you singled me out <laughs> speaking of console games there was some segue <laughs> we got lucas sullivan here with hello everyone from games radar plus managing editor in the u.s and then i'll say so it's funny i mentioned tom marks yes uh, the last time i was on the show tom Rest was right in the scene tom. Someone mentioned Tom Marks in the chat, but they did so not hearing me. So that's a bit of uh, <laughs> Whoa, serendipity. Some kind of coincidence. Uh, yes. Also with us, Wes Fenlin, Features Editor. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Esoteric JRPG expert who <laughs> is now thriving because they're all coming to the PC. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy. It's so, it's so out there, right? It's, the most out there it's series. It's just pretty like, obscure. Just for super nerds, right? Super <laughs> Barely. No one's, no one's heard of it. Oh, man. But thanks for joining us, everyone. Like I was saying, uh, we're all in a bit of a daze right now because it's the weeks leading up to E3. It's, it's busy, busy. We're all busy planning for the show itself, coverage for the show itself. Uh, Tim and Evan are just like zombies now because they're finalizing stuff for the PC gaming show at E3, our... our annual annual now press conference or conference for revealing cool new games and kind of showcasing all the cool stuff coming to PC. With Day 9. Uh, with Day 9 again this year. The so man, a lot the of cool surprises coming up. Um, James, can I ask you a question? Yeah. How many times in the past month have you woken up sort of yes. foggy-headed after a night of drinking Okay. <laughs> and the first thought to pop in your head been the words, oh no, because you bought another Fortnite item you shouldn't have bought. <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I will tell you, this month has been better, but I did relapse. Uh, Are you keeping a tally? Uh, of, uh, I'm not giving a tally. Are there any spreadsheets? Or? I, the spreadsheet, or I guess the expenditure in the tally is, the, is, is saved for the end of the month when I look at like my bank account and go, this could be different. This could be different right now. <laughs> because... I have a problem buying Fortnite cosmetics. I've been there. The it's fir uh, the first step is admitting. It's true. A and and to be to, okay, I have since slowed down. But that start of season four, I was just like, I felt like I was made of money. I was like, give me it, give me it. But those are all. Money. They were all old costumes, except for the battle pass. So it's not like anything. Mm, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like. <laughs> They've been working on me. They've been wearing me down. So it's not <laughs> you like were catching up with that backlog. Of I cool was, stuff. and there's sort of a sort of a pre when you see someone with a season three or season two skin, you're like, oh shit! All right, you get a respect. little. Uh, I respect yeah. you. I re not really respect you, but you know, there, you, there's something there. <laughs> you don't uh, shoot at anyway. them for. I, I don't mean to fear belabor, of... belabor your addiction. I just wanted to know how many how many rough mornings have there been? You know, it's I, I went on a streak without buying anything for like three weeks. Ooh. Just yesterday, the uh, stupid there's a pickaxe. It's incredible. It's um, I don't know the right word for it, but uh, there's there's a planet Earth at the center, which is not how the universe works, and a bunch of planets rotating around it on a pickaxe. What do you call that? It's, it's like, like a portable class uh, astronomy exhibit. Oh God. Setup. Yeah, a Galileo type dealy. There you go. You call there you go. Uh, uh, but yeah, I bought that for a pickaxe now, for twelve dollars or something. Do you think flat earthers will take offense to that pickaxe? Ooh. I mean, Fortnite's getting political. They'll. Think I think it. it splits. It splits it a bit because in this model, Earth is or whatever it is is at the center of this universe. So so it's, it's not flat, but it's mm, at the center. It's you know? uh, admittedly inaccurate. Yes, from the get. Or accurate. 
Oh. Maybe it's X. <laughs> you can also dig with it, and it's definitely not a sharp object. So it, it's inaccurate in all kinds of ways. I mean, who really knows? What is reality? Uh, welcome to Philosophy 101. We're going to watch The Matrix. Um, <laughs> you, you joke, but legitimately, I, my Philosophy 101 <laughs> class, they played The, they played the Matrix. <laughs> play, allegory of the Cave and The Matrix. Let's get it going. <laughs> uh, what is this podcast about? Computer games. Uh so we have a lot to talk about. I, I was saying, like, E3, there's, like, a new game announced every week, it seems. We had Call of Duty Black Ops 4. We had Battlefield 5 last week. And this week, I'm going to make the same joke. They skipped a couple. We have <laughs> Fallout 76, uh, which we don't really know much about. We or do, do we? We'll, we'll get to that, right? So, so there's been some sources on some websites who have claimed things uh, about this game that we're going to dig into and, and you know... Uh, I don't know, talk about, see if we agree with them. I hope, what I hope when they is. do the full reveal that, like, remember when Final Fantasy yeah. uh, 13 turned into Final Fantasy, or versus yes. 13 turned yes. into Final Fantasy 15? Long... I want to see that Fallout 76 logo appear, and I want to see the 6 get crossed out, <laughs> and a 7 appear <laughs> next time. Whoa. <laughs> that would be tight. <laughs> That's right, we're going one more. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, before we get into that, uh, there's some other news we'll, we'll hit too, but I want to know what you guys have what you guys have been playing. Screw all those new games. What about these old games mm. you've been playing? Lucas, what about you? Uh, I'll talk an old game and a new-ish game. Okay. Uh, Hearthstone Relapse did happen. Oh. I lost, uh, I saw, here's what happens. I see a deck online that I think is cool yeah. and I have the cards for, and I say, I'd like to try that. Uh, and the nice thing about Hearthstone is you can just copy a deck code and paste it in to the game, oh, so it automatically builds the deck. That's nice. You don't have to work for it. Yeah. Just, um, I mean, you have to have the cards. I have a lot of cards because, like your Fortnite addiction, I've spent too much money on Hearthstone. Uh, you get in there with a deck. You win two games, as I did. You feel good about yourself. You keep playing. You lose and ten in a right. row, <laughs> and you say to yourself, <laughs> why am I doing this again? <laughs> And uh, why are you doing this again? Well, I, I honestly don't know. But for that's it for this month. I mean, okay. the season's over after right. tomorrow. Right. So, and then the cycle starts anew. Uh, Lucas <laughs> had a, a really From dust to dust. You had that one month where you were so close to legend. Yes, that you could you could taste it. But you I literally you get there. <laughs> was knocking on its door. Oh. And plummeted down back to earth. So yeah, I I don't I don't wish to hit legend anymore. <laughs> That's you not kind of let go of that. Broken. I've let go of it. Well, uh, then it's maybe easier to enjoy the game for you. Then maybe yeah, I, I get my five wins, okay. so I get my card back for the month, and then I'm satisfied to just play weird fun decks. I mean, that sounds like a life lesson. Yeah, in a card game. Uh, yeah, very much so. Cool. Uh, I also been playing Wizard of Legend, which mm. Wes clued me into. Uh, yeah. It is a top down rogue light uh, because you can For keep. For babies. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't keep. Uh, so someone said it was like Rogue Legacy. That's not true. There's no like talent tree that you're um, gradually increasing health or attack damage on. But, but you, you do get a lot to, of abilities. Yeah. You collect spells okay. essentially and you get to pick four of those spells to take with you every time. Um, so I have found what I think is my ideal combo, but I don't actually own the spells mm, that I want. So you just have to get lucky and find them in the dungeon. Yeah. Um, but it's, uh, it's a really fun game. The art style is great. Uh, it is pixelated as so many roguelites are, but uh, it's a cool wizard theme. A lot of people are comparing it to Avatar, The mm. Last huh. Airbender. Isn't like the, the hoods kind of have a similar thing going to them? Yeah, and there are elemental... Uh, like council members who you have to beat in the dungeon and the okay. the lore of it is pretty much a just for fun competition which is nice uh, i find that refreshing that it's not nice. like a life or death situation it's okay. just can I you beat the that. three council members great it's also really punny right they're like i think all the bosses uh the, like the yes. elemental <laughs> boss he has some like rock pun it's terrible <laughs> uh, okay the, your spell book is named tomi no. that's right um, no, it's not. <laughs> I was uncomfortable with that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's uh, that's a fun game, and I look forward to right on. one day beating it. Anything else? Uh, you know, so the Twitch Prime uh, games, it's, they're a pretty good deal. And 
You okay. only have a day or so left to get them, but uh, Shad, what is the? There's a. In here? Uh, it's it's evading me. The blade of the shogun. Um, oh, it just isn't it called Blades of the Shogun or something like that. It's just like that's XCOM. the subtitle, I think. Oh. Yeah, it's like Commandos, but for uh, uh, samurai and tactics? ninja. Yes, yeah, Shadow there it Tactics. Is. Thank yeah. you. There it uh, is. I want to. I want to get into that. So hardcore. that was a free game on. That was a free game mm-hmm. on uh, on Twitch Prime Games. So I'm excited to see what next months are because they've been getting some uh, some good picks. Cool. Thanks for that shill. Sorry, I don't no. make any profit from... Uh, <laughs> so subscribe now. Subscribe yeah. now. Don't forget to hammer that. I Use my if, Amazon discount code. I don't think we even have like donations or anything <laughs> going right now, but I'll send you my mailing address if you guys want to send me five bucks. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Just hit me up. Don't. Uh, cool. Well, thanks for the recommendations. Uh, Wes, what you been playing? <laughs> Uh, I've been playing Dark Souls Remastered. This sounds obscure and old. Yeah. It's the only kind of game I play. <laughs> okay. I mean, how old is Dark Souls for real? 2011. What okay. were you doing in 2011? Lucas and I went to I GameStop. Was in college. Oh, yeah. No, I was not in college. <laughs> <You were talking laughs> <about>. <laughs> we bought it at a, yeah. We bought it at a GameStop in San Francisco. I think at both of our interests, or maybe your interest. Okay. Uh, and then... We, I think you played the very beginning of it, and we're like, nah. <laughs> and I think okay. I, and Orlando, equal, I, I equally played the beginning of it and was got my ass beat and was like, mm, not so into this. And then neither of us played that game on Xbox 360. And then several years later, I played it on PC. Uh, but like a couple years after it came out on consoles when it came out on PC, right? 2013? Something like that, yeah. Um, and then I played it, I think, a bit after launch mm-hmm. and took a while to really get into it. But once I finally did, loved it. Head over heels. Um, yeah. So Remastered is mostly the same game. Like, yeah. And for the best, like, I'm really glad that they didn't go in and, like, muck with uh, balance on different weapons. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't fuck with like how much damage spells do and like try to rebalance the game or anything like that. They didn't try to get rid of, you know, glitches that you can do for speed running, any of that stuff. They touched up the graphics a little bit. They uh, made the PC port actually decent. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not, you know, they didn't add a ton of bells and whistles to it, but it can now run at proper resolutions, right? So if you have a 4K monitor, it'll run at 4K. If you have a 1080 monitor, it'll run at 1080, not in the weird, like, cropped aspect ratio, you know, super low-res version that it ran at uh, without DS fix. So it's it's much more playable now. It actually gives you proper button prompts if you're using mouse and keyboard versus (laughs) uh, controller. Although, why would you? It, you would not. I mean, you should, not. <laughs> but if you want to, that option. It's is possible. There. I, I I beat the asylum demon with mouse and keyboard. It's not day. once you have like proper keybinds. It's not horrendous. No. Yeah. No. Um, but the, I think the most important stuff they did with remastered is just kind of fix the underlying network stuff that yeah. in yeah. the original PC port was on uh, what games for Windows Live was pretty dodgy, uh, didn't work really well. I know in the past couple years, they moved it off of that onto, I guess, a Steam backend Mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. I never played it with that, so I'm not sure how well that worked. But they've switched over to dedicated servers now versus peer-to-peer. The game runs at 60 FPS also, which is great. And there are, so James, you and I were talking about this yesterday. Yeah. There are now all these summon signs, uh, like in the starter area, for the Gravelord Covenant, yes. which I don't remember at all from when this game first came out on PC. Maybe they worked properly in like the PS3 version, but I think they were just straight up broken. Some, in, there was something. In the PC version. Yeah, it was kind of a notorious either bug or like design decision that made it just not work or not viable. But really. this this yeah. Covenant is basically if you're you're kind of like playing evil and you can put your sign down just to have people invade you, and so you can just. It's just basically another option to yeah. make people come fight you, and like yeah. you're you're causing mayhem in an environment, which I don't actually understand what effect that has mm-hmm. uh, on people who are not invading in your game. 
but it's a cool thing to see these signs everywhere and you'll regularly get messages like the chaos caused by yeah, this yeah. Gravelord Covenant person has been defeated, has been vanquished and whatever. So it's just been nice to see that. Plus there are regular summon signs all over the place because there's a really active community mm-hmm. now, tons of people playing the game either for the first time or replaying it. So it's just alive again, which is a great thing. Mm-hmm. And I think they upped the player count for yes. PvP as well, so you can have more yep. more summons in a single match, like six people or something mm. like that. They, uh, not- notably, they also included the password system that's been included in, like I think, Bloodborne and, yeah. and Dark Souls 3. It's in Dark Souls 3, yeah. Uh, which lets you connect directly with friends if you share the same password. So that's neat. So you can co-op it, basically. Yeah. I remember you having to work around that in some pretty <laughs> yeah, so arduous ways. I co the full game uh, originally when it came out on PC, but... To do that, you had to download a mod somebody made yeah. that would basically, I guess, scrub through all the summon data and match someone's username with the username on your Games for Windows Live friends list. <laughs> so it would yeah, like yeah. exclusively show you signs from people on your friends list, or it would prioritize those. Mm-hmm. So when my friend put a sign down, instead of there being like a 10% chance that it showed up in my game or whatever, it would be like 90%. It would pop up. And then it was still kind of janky to actually get the summons to work. Could just, I think Games yeah. for Windows Live was not a great back end. It was not. <laughs> but it works so much smoother now. That's been really great. I haven't done a lot of summoning, but from what I've seen, the like network performance has been really solid. Mm-hmm. Like I haven't seen a lot of you know people lagging all over the screen, jumping around. So I'm sure there are still lots of exploits out there. I know there are already like videos of people hacking Dark Souls oh, and you know fucking with people, but this is definitely the best way to play the game right now because it has such a you know a vibrant fan base jumping right in at the start. So if yeah. you've always been sort of scared to play the game but interested, now's a great time to do it because there are going to be a ton of people there to you can summon to help you beat bosses and get through the the rough spots. Yeah, I think playing these games while the community is like vibrant is really really key and it's like rare i, I don't know it, it it's it's it this is not going to happen again for some for while, time yeah so i you know i get it that it's 20 50 percent off if you own it already or the original prepared you, die edition yeah if you owned it already on pc it's 20 bucks so it's like i get that it's hard to just harder to justify on pc for a lot of people but i think it's probably worth buying in just to re- re-experience you know what it's like to play a Dark Souls game when it comes out, and especially the first one. Um, I'm curious to know, like, what happens to modding. Yeah. I don't really know how... I, I don't think any of the existing mods right. will work. Um, I'm certain they won't just work out of the box. It yeah. might be fairly easy to kind of bring them over. You know, it might not be yeah. a huge adjustment. I think we're just going to have to wait and see. Uh, if there's even a lot of interest in in doing that, you know? I would hope so because that was like a thing that really extended the life of Dark Souls on on PC, or at least like I think it really informed like pe- the general public's awareness and like inter- interpretation of the in relationship with those games. It's like speedrunning weird mods that affect where enemies are placed and and meme bullshit like fidget spinner weapons, Sonic. Yeah, Sonic getting... Thanks, Obama. Thank you, Obama. <laughs> thanks, you Obama, die. death. Uh, so, so, like, I don't know. There, it, it just, it, it, I would be sad if all of that kind of fell by the wayside. Yeah, I love um, the idea of the item randomizer mod somebody made yeah, where yeah. it just moved the equipment and stuff around because f- those games are so built around people who replay them over and over again accruing this knowledge of like okay i go into the the uh, graveyard at the beginning and i get this y hander and then i can use that weapon blah mm-hmm. blah like having going in there and then just discovering it's like the thief armor or something and yeah, you're yeah. planning to do your Ooh. strength build yeah like that's that completely changes your path through that world which is i think kind of the most entertaining part of it for people who have played the game over and over, over, and, over, over and over again yeah, yeah. so remastered it's good Play it if you like Dark Souls. If you, and if you don't like Dark Souls, get out of town. <laughs> get out of town. Get out of Lord Ron. Mm. We have some questions. So uh, if you have questions about it, prepare them for the end of the show. Because uh, we already have some more oh, from wow. some from. Shut them down. Uh, no, no there, there's some questions coming. <laughs> but like uh, I'm sure like Dark Souls is, is a very 
it's a thing, a game people have a very personal relationship with and Passion. love asking you about what kind of bills do you like? What's your favorite boss? Yada, yada. So uh, save those for the end of the show. Cool. Uh, Dark Souls Remastered, anything else you've been playing? Uh, I played some fun board games over the weekend. Ooh. Um, we do have a board game played, channel on PC. Yeah. Gamer.com. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, continue. Played, um, uh, a game called The Thing Outpost 37, I believe, is the name of the, the, the outpost, outpost from the movie. So it's based on the movie The Thing, uh, which you have seen, right, James? Yes. Oh, I love that movie. Uh, so most of the people um, playing this board game I played with had never seen The Thing, which I was just flabbergasted by. Um, but I was in that crew until recently, so I can't judge. It's a great movie. It is a great it's movie. Great movie. It's legit scary, and the effects hold up. Yeah. Uh, effects hold up and it's 30 something years old like 81 so, I want to say so wild. something yeah. like that yeah. uh, anyway the board game is if you've ever played any like hidden identity games like Secret Hitler uh, The Resistance Werewolf it's kind of like one of those games with some more mechanics uh, layered on top of it so you're stuck in the outpost with a bunch of other survivors you're all the, the characters mm -hmm. from the movie like McCready Childs etc and you're basically trying to go into like you put together a team uh each turn there's like a team captain that kind of rotates you go into a room you have to solve some kind of mission or crisis that you know plays from a card mm -hmm. and it's like oh you need to put in a bunch of supply cards from your hand and that influences how many dice you get to roll and if you roll a high enough dice roll you pass the mission some of them have different criteria and then after you succeed you'll get either a piece of supply equipment you need like some rope or a flamethrower or you'll end up having to fight the thing and once you do that in kind of different parts of the base you can try to do an escape and the escape is like you get to get on the helicopter and fly out of there but you have to make sure that a uh, person pretending to be the thing mm -hmm. is not in your escape okay. party you or go. you lose. Huh. And so throughout the game, as you're going on these missions, there are between one and three players in the game, depending on how big it is and kind of the randomness of the cards, uh, who are um, the thing in disguise, right? That they have uh, assimilated a person mm -hmm. and taken mm -hmm. over their, their body as it goes in the movie. And you're trying to suss out who is this bad actor in your group throwing in sabotage cards and trying to screw you guys over. So it's it's pretty fun. That does sound like fun. I love games all about deceit. If you like those yeah. deceit games, but you <laughs> like a that. little bit more structure sure, to it sure. rather than it just being talking, basically, this kind of melds those two worlds. So it's, yeah. it's good. That's the thing, Outpost 37? I think Outpost 37 is Something the right like game. Yeah. Okay. Just thing board the game. The thing board game, you'll, you'll find, find it. it. Yep. Cool. Uh, as for me, I've been playing a few things. Dark Souls Remastered, as we discussed. Uh, I, I've played the beginning of that game like seven times right now. I just like <laughs> haven't had time to <laughs> dig in. I know that feeling. Uh, I played this indie game called Far Lone Sails. Which, and, not to put you on blast, but I think that's fairly fairly old, right? Is like it from old? last year? It might have been Early Access or something. I thought it came out pretty recently. I know uh, one of our... Uh, sh club members could tell us in, in the chat. Either way, who fucking cares if it's old? Like this? <laughs> it's, it's if it's new to you, then that's playing, all that I've matters. been playing this cool uh, atmospheric game called Mist. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty weird. Uh, and Far Alone Sales is like a, I, I would describe it, and a lot of people have described it as a side scroller, sort of in the vein of um, Limbo or or uh, Inside, where it's hmm. it. Very light, like puzzly physics based stuff. Uh, the focus is on narrative and, and art. A lot of ambiance. Yeah, and ambiance and music. And uh, you play this like little girl in a jacket and. Uh, Straight it, jacket? It's a big billowing jacket. And it's, it's really hard to see because she, she's so tiny on the screen. Um, because the focus is like this big machine that you're piloting that moves from the left to the right. Like, is it a boat? Uh, it's a boat ship car. <laughs> What's the difference between a boat and a ship, James? I, uh, one, I don't fucking a know. Dinghy? Uh, this is a, a <laughs> uh, galleon. Lone Sales came out May 17th. Lucas. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of the last train or the final station. Yeah, That's yeah, what yeah, I'm oh, thinking yeah, yeah. of. It looks very similar. Atmosphere right? is, is similar. It's not a zombie right. story or anything like that. But uh, My bad. Uh, it's it, like a lot of simple interactions. You're just like 
uh, you push this giant button to inside the craft, and like the camera will zoom in and like bisect the the, the craft, so you can see like all of the different stations. Always and yada, fun. Yada. Kind of reminds me of. Um, Jesus Christ. Never mind. I can't remember the examples. It's pointless. <laughs> uh, like an XCOM base cross Yeah, section. yeah. That's a good example. Except you're like platforming around this, the ship to like get to different things like the, the Lovers ignition. in a Dangerous Space Time. That's exactly it. Um, Lovers in Dangerous Space Time. Uh, and there's a there's like little boxes that you need to throw into a furnace to fuel it. Um, and you'll find them strewn about like uh, uh, the scenery on the, on the way to wherever you're going next. I don't think you can really ever run out. Maybe you can. Um... And eventually, you get a sail that you need to press. So, like, you'll see this tassel, and you'll see if the wind is uh, in your favor or not. Until you go up and press the sail, so you don't need to use gas, and uh, you just kind of roll through this landscape gently. That um, it looks like things have gone awry, or in the past, long ago, did, uh, and that maybe there is hope, and people are rebuilding, and so kind of a, like a quiet post-apocalypse yeah, very... rather than a Mad Maxy. Oh, definitely. It's not. It's... From what I've played so far, I've played like an hour or so. Uh, I still have to go down, sit down and finish it. Uh, and I hear it's pretty short, so it's not like a huge commitment. Um, and it sort of starts layering in new, like you'll get new pieces bolted onto your ship where uh, you might need to use like uh, a wench to pull something or move something around or... Uh, I don't want to spoil it because the mechanics in these puzzles are sort of like interesting. But like, um, You already spoiled the wench. Yeah, I mean that's like early, early, but... Uh, <laughs> Spoilers, winch. Um, someone says, one hour is not playing a game. Get out of here. Uh, 30 seconds is playing a game. Uh, it's the act of playing. But it's, yeah, uh, it's it's a really pleasant kind of, if you want to sit down and chill and just, like, let a story kind of happen to you that um, has some really pleasant platformy interactions and and uh, piloting, then uh, I think Far Alone Sales is pretty cool. Some nice music, too. Great art. Uh that's again far loon sales. Uh, otherwise, I've been playing. Can you guess? <laughs> the Knight of Four. Player announced Battlegrounds. <laughs> mm. I've been playing Fortnite, oh, and I, rather than regale you with like exactly how that's been for me, I'm just going to dive into some Fortnite news. That's cool with you guys. Fortnite's been fun. Tell me about the shopping cart. There's a James. fucking shopping cart. Uh, <laughs> the Brits call it the trolleys, which I forgot about. The shopping trolleys. Yeah, so Fortnite got the 4.3 update today, content update, and it the the, the, the showcase in this one is um, the shopping cart, which is, I guess you could call it a vehicle, right? Fortnite's yeah, first vehicle. You can ride in it. Can you roll, run over people with it and kill them? I don't know actually. I, I physics apply to it and like I by a teammate have been like pushed very far unwillingly uh, <laughs> against by them. A Bam uh, Margera situation. Can can one person, you know, be the one on the back of the cart doing the doing the kicks and the pushing that's and one person ride? Exactly inside? how it works. So, oh, that's so it's really cool. It's like it's a it's a juvenile fantasy yeah, it's brought like, into it's Fortnite. It's like being five years old in the grocery store, living your best life. Oh, I still do that to this day. <laughs> You sit inside the cart? No. <laughs> so push okay, me, push never me. mind. I go to I the do. Store. I push off the ground yeah. on the back, uh, and then sometimes a middle-aged woman will look at me funny. <laughs> <laughs> but that's exactly what they put in the game, and uh, you can use them on your own too. So they they increase your movement speed. If you are on a flat plane, as soon as you had to have to head uphill, it's trouble. Like so, it's not like these are just like a. I can escape the storm or like I can bolt across the map like instant uh, uh, like superpower. They are situational, super situational. Could um, you build a huge ramp using That's actually how they announced Ooh. it. I wanted to show the video, but our my browser display is busted right now, but uh, they announced it with like a like a almost like a road runner mm. style short where there's this huge ramp and they ride it down and then you know, try and make you know, make this big jump across a gap, but then in midair they go, whoop, whoop, falls to the ground. <laughs> Classic. Um, so Classic yeah. bit. Even though it would make no tactical sense, I really wish you could pick up a downed squad mate and instead of just reviving them as it would make sense to do, just throw them in the front yeah. while they're downed and then just like, <laughs> oh. getting you out of here, Johnny. <laughs> I wonder if you could. That'd be tight. Uh, I don't think that's currently in in our, but that's hey epic. taking you to the med station. <laughs> epic. I mean, that's Hold like on, a buddy. smart way to 
Maybe it could break the game, but it's uh, it, I haven't really like had time to dink around with them too much. I did uh, with the 4.3 content update. Also, some temporary modes came back. Teams of 20 version two, so it's five teams of 20 is another mode. It's really fun. Okay. Uh, they kind of updated it similarly to 50 v 50 in that each team has their own like bus path. Um, you can see on the map mm. and some other minor tweaks. Uh, and uh, they added blitz mode version two, which is basically like. You, you get a shitload of building supplies from harvesting. The storm starts instantly shrinking. It's just very quick. Uh, and some other minor tweaks, like um, uh, any object you place after your first building object will now place like slightly faster, which has been sort of a glitchy problem. But mm. um, mm. I think I think the big takeaway with the shopping carts is just they keep adding shit to this game, surprising shit to this game. I appreciate that their first effort at putting uh, vehicles in wasn't yeah. like we put in a motorcycle yeah. like yeah. Well, like any kind of vehicle you would expect <laughs> they went as weird with it as they could oh yeah much. And it, yeah there's some really cool clips emerging of people using these creatively it, it just like adds to the goofy sandbox of that game which is why I can tolerate it I usually hate competitive games and there's like a, a there's a there, there's a through line there's like holding that's still alienating to people which is the the real skill cap is the building right like but there's enough in there to like be bad. You can still be bad at the building or, or okay at it. Um, that keeps you wanting to return, you know, like shopping carts. I can at least like, I know I can ride around like Lucas, we've played duos a few times mm -hmm. and, and squads and is very often uh, fruitless for us. Uh, <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> wow. I mean, we have fun, but we are not, we're not like Ninja and Dr. Lupo out here. You know, fun uh, doesn't matter. Winning build Who battles. Who cares if you have fun? Irrelevant. <laughs> and Wins I, are all that matter. I mean, it, and Ws. over time, it can like if loss after loss after loss it can get grading. But you know, if they keep throwing like new toys in there, like the jetpack from last week and the shopping cart, it's like it, you know, if you if you can have one fun moment out of a match that even you don't win, like or, or we, it was worth it. Yeah, it's usually. You know, you're like, oh, I, I want to try that again, see what happens this time. I enjoyed my matches so. of Fortnite that I played even when I lost horribly, which was every time. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it has, like, like uh, your life lesson with Hearthstone, Fortnite has taught me to accept failure. Uh, <laughs> you're ready for Dwarf Fortress. I'm ready for Dwarf oh. Fortress. It's the gateway. That's but the, losing is fun. That's, that's the deep motto. Well. Uh, challenges, I will say, challenges, they're moving. The challenge is weekly reset from Tuesday to Thursday. So uh, while this update dropped today on Wednesday, tomorrow is when the week five challenges begin. And mm. you, you can bet you'll see some shopping cart related stuff. I don't know if the map update came today too, but they've been incrementally changing the map. And um, again, it's, I went to work today. So <laughs> even my job is, you know, sometimes playing Fortnite today was doing the show and I haven't had time to dig in. Did it feel like the jetpack actually changed anything? Definitely, uh, yeah. It, I mean, like, um, it's it's temporary, uh, so it's not gonna it's not around permanently. Um, but there were times where I would see a jetpack and be low on materials and be like, "I got an in, I got an in." <laughs> uh, the other day, I was a jetpacking bush, which was Whoa. a lot of fun. So I was just like, "No one would ever suspect." I had. <laughs> well, if I move stealthily, it was actually I got to the top three as Whoa. a jetpacking bush, All right. and like very little building. Uh, until, well, someone saw the bush flying <laughs> and <laughs> thought, that's not normal. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, when, whenever you see, like, I think it was a, a, a temporary or an experimental approach to, like, how can we prevent people from just camping in their towers, super, mm -hmm. super tall towers, or give people, like, more momentum when they're trying to push um, or more less predictable movement patterns more than, like, a wind button because you're still exposed when you use it. You're still as easy to hit. But mm -hmm. I think it's been fun so far. I don't think... I'm I'm happy it will be going away, because I don't think it's like <laughs> doesn't belong in your. I think Fortnite. I will be happy to have that as like a thing that comes in now and then. Mm. Um, just like I hope they bring the the guided rocket missile launcher as sort of a they just rotate in random random shit because I think uh, it keeps you on your toes. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking you should have had like they should have given you a tumbleweed skin once you equip oh the jetpack and the bush. That'd be good. Then that would make a lot more sense <laughs> canonically. <laughs> The tumbleweed meta. Uh, speaking of the bush meta, people aren't using the bush. It's a shame. They need to go update the bush. <laughs> uh, no comment. Let's, let's move on. on. Let's move on. So, uh, in, in related news, the uh, PUBG Core 
formerly known as Blue Hole, I believe. Um, Terrible name. <laughs> I'm Blue Hole or PUBG have... Core. Blue Hole. Okay. What yeah. does that mean? <laughs> I mean, it, it was it was around before PUBG, right? They were they made games like Terra. Is there they ball? made some MMOs. Yeah. Um, oh wow, that was them. Yeah, that was them. Yeah. Wow. Um, but now PUBG is like their shit, so I don't blame them for making that shift. Uh, PUBG Core is suing or filing a lawsuit against Epic Games Korea, which is you know an arm of Epic Games, the developer making Fortnite. What's over. the reasoning? The reason, that? okay, the reason isn't specifically because they like made a battle royale game because there are a lot of battle royale games, and I they, I think. Uh, they want to distance themselves from saying, like, people can't make these games. But I have something to read to you. Uh, here's how here's how they articulate it. So this is um, PUBG Core VP and executive producer Chang Han Kim. So we've had an ongoing relationship with Epic Games throughout PUBG's development as they are the creators of Unreal Engine 4, uh, the engine we licensed for the game. So PUBG uses Unreal Engine 4. Gotcha. Right? Uh after listening to the growing feedback from our community and reviewing the gameplay for ourselves, we are concerned that Fortnite may be replicating the experience for which PUBG is known. So let me backtrack a bit. They are sort of saying, like, you're doing... They don't mind that they're doing the Battle Royale thing, which I'll get to, but they were really, like, when Fortnite came out, Fortnite Battle Royale came out, it was eerily close, and I wrote about this in my first preview, which it was, like, negative. My impressions of, of Fortnite Battle Royale were negative. Because it was just looked like PUBG, talked like PUBG, but Fortnite. Uh, there were no really wacky items. It was just uh, you could build and shoot each other. And that map was fairly empty. It was a two-month project, right? Um, so they're going after them uh, for copyright infringement. How's it going to pan out? Don't quite know. Don't quite know. Yeah, so they, they kind of specify like yes. their, their beef is specifically with the engine and the royalties that yes. they pay Epic, right? Uh, and the, their relationship support technical stuff. Uh, it really doesn't. Um, it's hard to know how this how this is going to play out. Like none of us know because it's also in. I believe the lawsuit is filed in Korea. Yes. So yes. we're not, not experts <laughs> on Korean copyright law. Not at all. If, if it is significantly different than it is in the states, uh, there's also the weird fact that Tencent owns a stake yes. in both of these companies. Yep. So they 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 win either way, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Or lose either way. I, I don't, don't know. I don't know. It's it's a really weird thing and I I, I don't want to say it's unprecedented, but like it, just at this scale, these two big behemoths coming out, uh it and when Fortnite did come out, I think that was a major criticism of it. It was like it's doing the PUBG thing. And again, like it's more the weird relationship these games have with the the Unreal 4 engine. Uh, some early advertising for Fortnite, like, named PUBG, um, or excuse me, for Fortnite Battle Royale, like, used PUBG in their marketing. Mm. Um, that seems name. like a no-go. And yeah, th that was definitely, like, their early no-go. This was, like, sort of talked about last year, but now it's going to happen. Um, we'll be sure to update you guys as, as it does. Uh, it's going to be fascinating for everyone to follow, I'm sure, as, as best we can. And it, it really feels to me like the kind of move that probably nobody yeah. in creative on PUBG like cares about. You know, I don't think anybody there was like, we got to sue these guys for ripping <laughs> off our ideas. It feels very much like a corporate level decision of our, if we don't say, you know, if we don't file suit about this, our... Uh, claim on the name battlegrounds could be damaged like you know or, or our use of the battle royale to describe our game or whatever yeah. we could lose you know some uh, ownership of this term and we got to protect our property blah, blah 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 i kind of feel like it's going to end up either getting thrown out or being kind of a big nothing uh, at the end of the day yeah. but could be wrong it could be worth millions and millions and millions of dollars. So yeah. we'll see. I guess the good news is that Epic has a lot of money now. <laughs> so we'll see. They we'll could probably see. just like lock it in court and then just ble bleed them out while they're funding. Yeah, I feel like neither of those games will see any change no. as a result of this. So it's really just going to be at that 
corporate level, like someday if Epic loses and had to give them a bunch of money and like not refer to it as Battle Royale or something, you know, like some some small yeah. thing like that that ultimately is not going to really affect the game. So yeah. yeah. When is the artist of Battle Royale? The original manga gonna start seeking these, uh, Saying, hey, these fellas, kickbacks. <laughs> remember the story I did uh, about twenty years ago? Yeah, I, nothing, this is all my shit. The 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 crows have come home to roost. What is, is up with this like phenomenon? I don't know. Like starting with battle royale manga Hunger movie games. Hunger Games, like, and and I didn't think it would translate to games so quickly. Maybe I should have expected it too. Well, it was kind but, of a little fits and starts, yeah. right? I mean, Battle Royale has been around for quite a while. Hunger Games, when was that written? 2005, something, something like that. that. And then, you know, many blockbuster movie adaptations over a period of five years or whatever. And then kind of nothing in games until, I mean, there was the mod, there was H1Z1. Yeah. But it really exploded, you know, three years after the last Hunger Games movie or something. <laughs> I guess the, just, the technology and finally became viable Feasible. yeah anyway fascinating it's been fun to follow we'll see how it goes after e3 with the inevitable announcement of Sony. fortnite 2 fortnite 2 blank battle royale you heard it here first fortnite 2 uh let's talk about the the big news of the week fallout fallout 70 <laughs> so that was fallout a good 76. pregnant pause i know i gotta <laughs> hey i'm hosting a show here i'm trying to like Take my audience along for an emotional ride. You really belabored that point, James. I did <laughs> belabor it. Uh, Fallout 76 was T. Well, God, can we talk about that fucking awful stream? Yeah. Why uh, would it, it, why would you tune in for that, expecting to see anything anytime soon? Because it's Twitch. Like, who's gonna? Okay. Well, okay. Let's first. Yesterday, we knew something was going to happen because uh, Bethesda on our social media accounts like posted an image of a please wait sign in, in color-ish and then uh, started streaming on Twitch that sign on a television with a, uh, a Fallout Pip... What is it? What Pip Boy. Handy Pip Boy. Boy. Handyman. Pip Boys in the foreground. And... Uh, Handyman. What the fuck <laughs> Listen. Listen. Happy uh, Jack. <laughs> happy Boy. <laughs> Um, in the foreground, and just kind of let it sit, kind of let it really sit and soak. I saw there was a balloon at some point. There were, yeah, and it, yeah, there were balloons. People had balloons they threw around. There was a puppet that showed up. And if I could talk quickly about the puppet, so sure. I saw a gif that was making the rounds on Twitter of the puppet dabbing, and I was trying to figure out how you, how you do that with a hand puppet, because like. That's really hard. Yeah, it it's not easy. Okay, well, Anyways, I take it back. Try it at home. It was they. Yeah, I mean, it was a very <laughs> clearly <laughs> high effort a lot of production. Effort this. Uh, oh God, Vault Boy says Velocirower Roar. Not a Pip Boy. Pip Boy's the arm thing. It's you're you're right. You're right. Happy Jack. I like uh, f- <laughs> Friendly <Happy> Billy. Frank. <laughs> we had a pu- we Billy. had a a Vault Boy Pip Boy puppet at one point somewhere. It's probably in a closet. We, he had a starring role in episode two of the PC Gamer Show. Jesus, really? that's when we did the YouTube version. Oh my god, was, I, I watched that. I was a fan. I was a fan back then. And now you're here. I need to watch those because I remember them being filmed, but I never actually saw They're the finished. Good. We had a we had a, an early version of the PC Gamer Show. Go look it up on our YouTube channel. Uh, Pre James, it, it was pre-James. basically our tribute to the One Up Show. It was us yeah. trying to do the one yeah. up show, kind of a behind the scenes. It was cool. Uh, completely accurate to our daily lives. Some really show. funny uh Nothing awkward made skits. Up at all. Corey yeah. Banks. Corey Banks. Oh yeah, geez. I just recently pulled a Old gif office. out of it that I had oh, found yeah? on like uh buried in a, a video clip uh, of Tyler just drinking an entire like fifth of vodka. <laughs> it's not real. It's just, oh okay. I was gonna say uh, maybe but it's just like a good chug and then he's like, Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. Oh Tyler. Uh, what the fuck? Oh yeah, Fallout. Um, so this big old stream, and it took. Did it take over like twenty four hours, something like that, close to a full day? I, I watched it, it for like ten seconds. I, I, okay, so I think as as a casual viewer, uh, someone who does not work in games media, you'd be like, oh, okay, uh, I'll watch this for a bit, keep it on, and go about my life. Uh, but as people who are like, I f- especially felt for our news guys and, and such who were like trying to be on top of that. <laughs> 
were like merciless. Oh, this this could happen any second. They were just I don't know. By the end of the day, it was just hour <laughs> seven. Just pissed off. On. <laughs> just say something. Say something. Anyway, uh, this morning they showed an actual trailer for Fallout seventy six, and I would show it here, uh, but our browser is not working right now. Our browser capture. Uh, obviously, you've probably seen it by now. If you haven't, go to pcgamer.com and it's front and center on our on our homepage right now. But uh, it's it's set. Or at least like Fallout 76 implies Vault 76, uh, a year as well, I think, um, and it's set to a John Denver song, right? It's a good good musician. It's a good I he, he's a good musician. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's not really much to pull from it other than uh, some speculation at first glance. Like, when could this be set? Far earlier, it seems. Yeah, Vault seventy six is the one yeah. that opened really like twenty years? shortly after the whatever the apocalypse. Yeah, and, right? and most of these Fallout modern Fallout games are set like two hundred years after the apocalypse. So this is like early time Fallout stuff, uh, probably. Um, and beyond that, there's all this talk of reclamation. Uh, you see a lot of familiar stuff: computers, uh, the the Wastelander outfit. And um, is this just going to be a game about dying of radiation poisoning? I hope like, are not. you just gonna go wander out and then you get to live for like eight hours and then you just succumb to radiation yeah. sickness and just die? <laughs> Is that the whole game? It's a fun game, probably. So we didn't really know anything coming out of the trailer, other than Fallout. It's not a remaster, so you guys can chill. Uh, this is a, do- a new game. Um, but then Kotaku, with their sources and contexts, uh, Jason Schreier in particular, I think, like, and he's fairly reputable for having reliable sources and, and contacts and leaks for many, many games. They put up a story that kind of ran through some details on what Fallout 76 is. And it's not a mainline Fallout game. This it's is a, not a Fallout 5 or no. a Fallout New Vegas kind of kind of spinoff. Yeah, this is a, an online multiplayer game. <sighs> yeah. Call the Rage. I know they are. Battle Royale was never mentioned, so don't sweat that yet. <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. Uh, but comparisons were made to, uh, let me see, Rust and DayZ. So a more of an online, open world-ish, interacting with other players with sur- light survival mechanics were, were mentioned as well. I knew it. Um, Radiation poisoning. Yeah, survival-based and multiplayer mechanics, whatever multiplayer mechanics means. It's like a nonsense. So we figure was, but, probably the base building stuff is going to yes. be a big component here. I mean, that was that was probably the biggest addition to Fallout 4. Yeah, one I didn't care for at all, I'll be honest. Same here. Uh, I think maybe if it was a slicker system, I would have maybe. But uh, it, it was so... The, the pacing of that against like the the urgency of your quest was so di- diametrically opposed. Uh, it's I just like could a not hand break it. on your progress when yeah. it's like build for your yeah. for your settlers. And I think like the the end result of making those settlements was just like I made a dollhouse uh, or something. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't <laughs> there was probably some kind of payoff. Like I think you could generate. Resources and isn't like, the happiness of your friends a pay off, James? <laughs> uh, your virtual friends, uh, uh, those like stiff, like styrofoam looking Bethesda people, <laughs> uh, not so much. But uh, it uh, oh, important to note quests and story, like any other Bethesda game, were mentioned. So the questing and all that stuff isn't going away. All this allegedly started as like a next. An attempt to make Fallout 4 multiplayer that slowly changed over time into this current rendition. Uh, it's being developed, according to the sources, by um, Bethesda Maryland, their main studio that makes Skyrim and all the mainline Fallout games, and in tandem with the Austin studio, who no one probably really knows for anything other than a canceled project called Battle, Battle Cry, Cry, which I saw at like many events. Which was it announced at the same time as Battleborn. Oh my God! Really? I believe, or, yeah. or if not at the same time, they were both definitely con- concurrent games of <laughs> discussion in the kind of hero shooter wave uh, that both had pretty sad fates. <laughs> so yeah, I want to ask you guys. Like, first of all, are you fans of Bethesda's Fallout games or, or open world RPGs? And kind of follow up with like, does this sound like an interesting shift? Uh, or, or, or pivot 
for, for this kind of series? Like, does this sound interesting at all to you? Like a multiplayer, rusty, daisy, base buildy pseudo RPG with other people? I mean, I, I sadly cannot contribute much because I'm a Bethesda Luddite. Oh! And Fallout has never grabbed me. I tried four. Uh, I think I the point I stopped was when I when it asked me to build a settlement and I said like <laughs> I don't want to but I also don't oh, want dude. to I'm a completionist when it comes to quests so I was uh, locked in a uh, a uh, yeah a bad situation, situation. she yeah. just built some freaking walls and called it <laughs> I think that's what I did I made live like in a, a box bat, 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 and just like <laughs> the bare minimum um, I did not play Fallout 4 right or Skyrim, actually. Holy I played same. Oblivion back in the day. Loved okay. Oblivion. Played Fallout 3. Loved Fallout 3. Uh, didn't play enough of New Vegas. If I ever go back and play a Bethesda game, I will play New Vegas because it's not actually a Bethesda game. It's an Obsidian <laughs> game. Uh, and I love Obsidian. They have great writers. Uh, even if that game is janky, so is every Bethesda game. So yep. I'd rather take the kind of Obsidian's touch, uh, RPG touch. They, they're the best in the business. Uh, and I really didn't have any interest in Fallout 4 after so much feedback about the game was you really can't roleplay your way through a lot of the quests. Like, mm -hmm. at most of the game kind of devolves into shooting. Mm -hmm. And even if the shooting was better than previous, uh, you know, Fallout games, Bethesda games, that's, like, not why I want to play one of those games. You know, I'd rather play a Killing Floor or yeah. a Doom or something for the shooting. So... I, I kind of just lost interest at that point. Like, I need the quests and the characters and stuff to be really, really compelling. And for my choices in how I resolve those things to be meaningful. So I kind of just didn't care sure. about that game too much. So this one, again, like, if it's going to be largely combat-based, if it's this kind of multiplayer survival thing... The combat's gonna have to be good. Yeah. Uh, and maybe the Battle Cry Studio is gonna lend some expertise there to weapon feel and mm. stuff, but I don't I don't know if that's the case. So I actually played I got a chance to play Battle Cry before it was canned. So this is like twenty fourteen. This is twenty fourteen. Yeah. Judges Week twenty fourteen. And uh it so basically was... almost right now <laughs> four years four ago. Four years ago. My God. Uh it was not great. Um there were classes that were extremely overpowered and i feel like most of the people at the demo figured it out pretty quick like if i just play this tanky guy okay. i could just outlive everyone and they can't do anything um but i also wonder so rust has combat i know that but yeah i think the fun of the game for people saying this as an outsider is it's not fighting people it's meeting people and just interacting in the, weird the ways the tension yeah. of that yeah. right yeah um friend or foe so fallout 76 does that in an apocalyptic setting that could be interesting um but you know question uh james you've played fallout 4 yeah. H what happens when you die is it that you get your body is like taken to a um a doctor who patches you up, or is it that you just get a game over? Yeah, I think that's you just a get game a game over. over and reload. So yeah. if Fallout seventy six makes you build a new character every time you die, I feel like that'll really take the the RPGs. wind out of my sails. Even personally. though that's how most of these kind of games like Rust yeah. work, that feels at odds with the way Bethesda would design one of these games, especially with quests and, mm -hmm. and story being mm -hmm. involved. So I'm guessing they're not going to take that approach, but that. I mean, that's how a lot of these games work. So that does kind of the challenge. It's an interesting yeah. way to set it apart, maybe, is having that degree of permanence that those other games wouldn't have. And maybe you just get sent back to your base with, you know, some penalty, you lose some money or something. Right, right. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it I think it makes sense from like a, a big business developer standpoint is to, you know, you've had all these early access games sort of like just sitting in in Steam, like and made by you know small teams over the course of like the last gosh what when did daisy start like seven years ago something like that okay. yeah so it's yeah, been yeah. a long yeah. while it's getting nearly a decade on we've yet to see like a really like full forced big big you know big studio effort try to do something similar in that space and i think fallout setting wise makes sense but like i think but is just like doing 
what you know trying to get get that good uh that good game money <laughs> <laughs> it definitely feels like another way for right? them to uh sort of fill in the gaps between their long in development yeah. single player games that like I know Fallout Shelter which originally came out for what was it, iOS yep. and then eventually was on PC I'm sure it's on Android is it on consoles maybe even at this point uh, yeah. it's on a few platforms yeah. I think they made more money from that game <laughs> than maybe any other game they've ever developed <laughs> maybe Skyrim has made more money because they put it on every platform yep. ever but that made that game made them a ton of money on the microtransactions. Those whales. And I'm sure that this game, if it, you know, hooks an audience, will give them years worth of potential for new skins that they sell to people. Or, you know, maybe it goes a more traditional kind of content expansion route. I feel like it's gonna be microtransaction stuff. You know, it's gonna be skins, it's gonna yeah. be stuff for your settlement, it's gonna be you know, whatever stupid shit that they can convince, <laughs> you know, Fortnite players to buy, uh, buy, stupid, you, buy you a special pickaxe. Yeah, you heard me. You heard me. I'm just kidding. I, th I think people love that universe so much that if they can get, create a game where people want to be in it regularly and then they can just sell you bits and bobs here and there, yeah. that can fill in the four or five year development cycles of those, those big games. Um, and I, I, I want to like say when I say they're going for that game money, I don't mean to like sound like that's not a criticism. Like Bethesda, gosh, were they the studio last year that like their E three thing was like save single player games? Like they've been doing the single player thing, Wolfenstein two for a long Prey. time, and they are not dying, but they are like in the current video game climate, not the safest like you know pillar to lean on uh, alone. And I think Bethesda needs to diversify and. This is like a sensible way to do that. Uh, I, and, and people have been clamoring for an online Fallout game for fucking ever. Wasn't there like a Fallout MMO in the works? Oh, back when yeah. <laughs> I um, think so. I, I, Around don't, the don't time of like that. auto assault. It's <laughs> so long ago. There have been a few canceled Fallout pro projects. Yeah, yeah. And here. I mean, I think people wanting a, another mainline Fallout or like that role playing experience like uh and it's probably are, coming extra burned by four because it wasn't exactly what they wanted uh rightfully so i don't think it was that great and maybe <laughs> extra hurt about this hurt Ugh, the product <laughs> um but i think like just like a lot of people need to divorce their like expectations from the name uh fallout uh, and what this game is trying to be uh, or at least allegedly trying to be. Um, again, this is, this is all hearsay. Well, if I may, I, I feel like the teaser trailer almost gave me an Animal Crossing vibe. Like, with all the panning shots of the interior Yo. of the, the bed. No, there's an intriguing oh, combination. Oh, shit. Yeah, it seemed like there a lot of the game would be collecting stuff to keep in your little section of the vault. Um, I could dig that. I can really dig that. I mean, there are the I want the peaceful vibe trailer where you're like walking around, you're like delivering a letter to your neighbor, yeah. and then a fucking death claw comes out of nowhere and just <laughs> decapitates you. <laughs> Takes your yeah. I th that's appealing to me, especially because like as much as like I I don't like the the settlement building in Fallout Four, it was huge. Like with a lot of people, mm -hmm. I, I don't I hate to like draw a direct connection between like. Minecraft and, and this, but there's just like a lot of people who like that's the kind of thing they like to do is make houses, make things in, in games rather than, you know, full on combat and like reading lines and lines and lines of dialogue. <laughs> uh, hell, I, I went on a, there's some really good Fallout settlement ASMR out there if you're. Uh, <laughs> If what? you're curious, <laughs> with the with the dual microphone oh, yeah. with the ears, <laughs> they uh, there's like I. I <laughs> There was a period in my life where uh, I say a period, dark time. I mean, like a stretch of two or three days where I <laughs> was, qualify as a period. Was stressed, and <laughs> I found the the Fallout for base building ASMR community on YouTube and watched a good what an lot of those <laughs> what a what a Venn diagram. And it's just people giving is. tours of their like super elaborate, like super elaborate settlements. So the stuff people have like pulled off with that system is like janky and awkward as I thought it was like is super impressive to me. I, they have thousands of thousands of like 
times more patience than I ever had with that shit. But uh, also, they got those good mics. <laughs> James, do you know if there's Dark Souls ASMR? There is Dark Souls ASMR. I tried to like get in contact with this guy because I wanted to like talk about his process and like why. But there's a there's a let's play or two out there of Dark Souls ASMR. If you would. every time I see ASMR, I'm like. I, I just internally say, S speak up. I can't hear you. What's that? <laughs> well, now we're going to go fight ceaseless discharge. <laughs> and then you get flagged on YouTube and demonetized. Ceaseless I'm discharge, gonna, ASMR, 24 7. Eat this pudding and fight. I've yeah. seen ASMR uh, kind of lighting up the charts on Twitch, too. Like, live ASMR. It's a, it's a thing. Hey, what? I tell you, Bob Ross fucked us up, his kid. Because <laughs> I love, like... But he's speaking uh, in a normal voice. But he, it's the mic quality. It's the things he does. I just, like, get the chills. It's and the calming presence. I don't blame anyone on YouTube for getting out there and ASMR. And sure. So when not? are we going to find out more about Fallout 76 at Bethesda's E3? Yeah, show? I would imagine at their showcase, which... I think it was on the Sunday before E3 last year. Maybe? Yes, it is. It is. They were the first, I think, and now right. they're locked in as like the <laughs> getting the ahead year. of every. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. So, uh, which last year didn't work out so well for them because their show last year was a little bit light on uh, stuff to show off. It was. It was. I mean, they had a lot of known quantities. So I hope we see besides Fallout. I hope we see like. Besides sequels for existing stuff they have, like some new interesting IP. Starfield, right? Was that the name of their, their teased project? Yeah, yeah. So that's actually, this is a good time. I guess we can, unless you guys have anything else to say about Fallout 76. I guess I did uh, wonder for Fallout 76, sure. like, do you think there will actually be NPCs in the world to talk to? Because that wouldn't really make sense if you're sort of the first frontier of people rebuilding I, civilization. I think you'll have NPCs from your vault that move yeah, out into the wander or whatever. But I don't think it'll have the kind of the similar, like, oh, you can travel across the wasteland and there's a whole town city over yeah. here and one over yeah. here. I think it'll yeah. be more barren than that. I mean, I feel like the appeal of the Fallout games is that you're coming across these sort of old-timey noir junk yard style um, civilizations. Mm -hmm. But if none of that's there, then what? You're just walking I'm, through a nuclear so I'm telling wasteland? You, it's, it's Fallout in name. or my, I predict it will be Fallout in name mostly. It, this is like people who want to just like survive in a wasteland made by Bethesda. You know, <laughs> online with your buddies. Like The Fallout name's on there and it's probably going to be some of that character coming through and yada yada, but I don't think this is... People should expect like Fallout 5. Yeah. Out of and do you think it'll set up characters that become known in, in later? I mean, later if games? I was developing that game, I would sure as hell like make some nods. Lore it out. Stuff. I would lore the fuck out of it. But uh, yeah. I'm curious to know more. I don't know if I'm excited yet, but super, super, super. You're curious. open. You're open. Uh, you were talking about Starfield, Wes, which is actually. And by saying the name Starfield, I've exhausted my knowledge of <laughs> I know. what Starfield is. I remember. I, I think it's a, the game that they teased as like the Bethesda proper studios' next big thing, next big single player game. Rumored is that, or they do you know Elder Scrolls uh, Six or whatever. Yeah, I, there was a. You should go to Games Radars where you should go. For oh, you, you guys have a, a know everything. I think we do. We do have a Starfield. Uh, could yeah, I'm this is top get one. In there, get in, in there. Space. All right. Well, thank you. So, yeah, Mr. we have a. It's a fantasy that. bow in front of a space uh, backdrop. I, I believe that was the official teaser uh, concept art. Gotcha. But I think what I'm guessing is they saw the backlash on No Man's Sky and mm -hmm. were like, "Let's rework this." Or also, you know, Destiny, like, the, yeah. that kind of game. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a long time since we've heard anything about it. I'm guessing whatever it eventually is will probably not resemble, you know, probably won't the be called. teaser stuff from two years ago, a year ago. Right. But uh, it's a thing. I, it it has been we know about teased. And one of our uh, Discord listeners was asking about it. Um, Who's that? Mildos. 
Is it real? And do we believe the hype, or does it end up being more of the same we've come to expect from Beth Soft Games? Again, don't know. I I wish we knew. I wish we knew. And even if we did, we'd we probably may find talk. out. <laughs> uh, but I, I I I'm not against a Bethesda open world RPG sci-fi entry. That sounds. I mean. I like sci-fi fantasy entry. Whatever. I like the prevalence of these games that let people sort of have fun with multiplayer again, yeah. and like just goof around in these worlds, like Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Yeah, uh, although Sea of Thieves kind of it seems yeah. to have hit a few snags. So anything where you can just where it's like novel to be around other players again, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um, that seems to have become kind of rote. In, I, I uh, agree. Years I agree. past. I agree. Um, but yeah, let's open up the floor to listener questions. Uh, tag PC Gamer in the Twitch chat if you have a question about anything we've talked about today or PC games in general. E3, if you want to ask Lucas about console games. <laughs> I'll oh, tell you all I know. Lucas about his uh, days of interning at PC Gamer. Oh, before back in the day. Or I worked here long ago. Treason. I, yeah, I, I have more PC Gamer seniority than... No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you were on the podcast back then. I was. Uh, I listened to you. I was on, I remember the days of Cat Fantastic and all that jazz. We've done a few in the, in the podcast. We've regular here with our current schedule, but I hope to bring interesting segments back into the fold more often once we go digital. Uh, and I'll, I'll touch on that before we close out. But uh, Ooh, exciting. Uh, I do answer Discord, PC Gamer Club Discord members' questions first. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to club.pcgamer.com to find out more. We have a monthly subscription um, service that... Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> you pay like five bucks a month. And you a get pittance. ad-free experience on the site. You get a free game each month. You get a digital subscription to the magazine. What is there, Wes? Uh, Tub Geralt. Tub Geralt, high glossy JPEGs. <laughs> uh, free games. Free games. Uh, we send our beta codes for whatever upcoming games you know, uh, we, we can get a hold of uh, to you guys first. Lovely Club. community. Uh, Discord community access, which is uh, it's just growing all the time, and it's I, I love hanging out in there. And uh, I've met a lot of really cool people that I play games with. Quite often, just make some new friends. friends. Yeah, so I recognize Jules in the chat. Yeah, Jules, like the homie. Find some people to play with. Jules sometimes. is a human I I admire and love, and I couldn't have said that without the PC Gamer Club. <laughs> <laughs> That's like we'll put that on the actual West, <laughs> and it rhymes <laughs> almost. Uh, but let's go through those questions first. So um, I'll get to that one in a second. Uh, Philip, we we might have addressed this, but. Uh, Nah, we'll skip that one. Sorry, Philip. We answered it. But he asked, <laughs> "What kind of wow. what kind of Fallout do you want seventy six to be?" And I think we would all want it to be something, maybe not this. <laughs> I, if I'm being frank, like I don't think any of us are. I'm projecting, but super big on online survival, crafty games like Rust and Daisy. I don't know if that's all. Yeah. Forte. At the same time, I'm not really hankering for like the Fallout Five giant yeah, RPG either. So point. I'm kind of just curious what it is like. Yeah. I, Let I have them no experiment. huge Maybe they can, uh, draw to fall out. Yeah. So, like, whatever it is, I'm I'm curious. Yeah. Cool. Uh, but we also answered this. What did you think of Bethesda stream? Is dog shit. <laughs> uh, just it, give us a timer. Give a, give a countdown. Yeah. It's, it's almost disrespectful to say we're going to milk these nerds for all they've got. I, I understand also. At the same also, time, what do they get out of it? Uh, I mean, viewers, view count. Concurrence. Uh, they build a. I, I don't know. There's there's some. Are those metrics really justified that reason? Them? I mean, it's almost like they got the double dip on the announcement because everyone wrote a news post about the stream, and then everyone wrote a news post about the reveal. So it's kind of. Yeah. I mean, hey, hey, marketing is a unique beast. I want to. I seriously want us to do a stream of coconut monkey sitting and just fucking sitting on the oh, desk. Oh, did I All tell day, you guys? Let right me tell here. you guys a story. He's a star. Let's do it. So once back in the day, the Games Radar days, when we did live streams, mm-hmm. we once accidentally left the camera and stream on overnight. Oh my God. And people were tuning in by the hundreds and <laughs> it, uh, interacting in chat saying like, did I just see something move? Like, is someone in there? And then uh, one of our old employees, Brian, very cleverly went 
into Twitch and change the title of the stream to like Secret Room. <laughs> and people just watched it until we came in the next day and turned off the stream. Oh my God. So that's great. people will uh, find something in nothing. And uh, that's a uh, cool I mean, thing about Twitch. Twitch keeps revealing that kind of stuff to us, like uh, uh, Human Twitch plays nature. Pokemon and any. You know. We should just title a video like Twitch plays Coconut Monkey. But not set up not any set up. <laughs> software. Just put coconut Go monkey on the desk. I'm down. I'm down. Uh, let's move on to this next question from Sargun. So, do you think Dauntless? Uh, Dauntless is a free-to-play Monster Hunter style game that just went into open beta the yeah, last, last week, week or two. Yeah. Um, do you think Dauntless will be more popular than Monster Hunter World on PC? No. Given <laughs> given that it is a somewhat polished for an open beta. Free to play game as opposed to a sixty dollars title releasing almost a year after its console debut. No, <laughs> because no, Monster no. Hunter has the established, um, like, people have fallen in love with the franchise long ago, like at yeah. like a decade, decade. ago. Uh, but also, a lot of it has to do with content. So, in Monster Hunter World, I think there, it's like. It's a few for that series, but it's still like 20 or something monsters to hunt. Yeah. And the impression I got from Dauntless was that there are like four. Uh, there's more. There's a lot more since. the. Uh, I want to say there's a lot more because the when I played last played in the closed beta was like a couple months ago, and they had just shown like two to three new monsters. So how is it? Uh, I haven't played it at all. Daunt okay, well, uh, Dauntless is, is fine. Dauntless is good and constantly improving. It is like I think more on par with a like an earlier like a Nintendo DS 3DS uh, mm -hmm. Monster Hunter game in that it's not an open world. It's kind of like a hub world with all your crafting stuff and you know all your all your missions and, and, and NPCs that you check in with and manage all your shit. Uh, and then you just like queue up and head into a world. There's a huge emphasis on multiplayer, so I think like you're gonna want to play with other people. There's a lot of cool like modifiers they put in, um, but Graphically, much more simple. The hunt itself, pretty straightforward. It's like a floating island, so they can't really hide anywhere. The, mm -hmm. the chase is not as thrilling, I think. Uh, but the combat, there's some really interesting weapons, I think, um, that capture... Uh, my favorite thing about Monster Hunter's weapons is like they feel like these big mechanical like contraptions. Some of them are super complex. Like They just added... Uh, uh, in, in Dauntless, a, a pike that like also doubles as this like sniper rifle, and there's a really cool like mm. charge. All these weapons have like these cool um, bespoke ways of, of handling, and they get that well enough, I think, and they're constantly improving Dauntless. Monster Hunter World, though, having played the on PlayStation Four, is the shit. It's <laughs> the shit. I think um, that's the th that's the reason I'm pretty confident that yeah. Monster Hunter World is gonna kind of crush it. Yeah, is if it was one of the older Monster Hunter games coming to PC, I would be less certain. Yeah. Um, but World clearly hit that next tier mm -hmm. of like polish, of fixing so many kind of little uh, cumbersome elements of the of the previous Monster yeah. Hunter games that would hold some people back. Uh, you know, having the open world all threaded together, having the level of fidelity of like. You know, you can look in the mud mm -hmm. to see uh, footprints, and it looks really good. And you can see the bushes sway, and like the environments have more yeah. interplay with how the monsters behave, and like it just has that next level of production quality that comes from it being a game you have to pay money for, yeah. of being a game that took five years to make. That I think that is such a differentiator yep. for a series that already has that big name pedigree that this isn't just them putting out like the five-year-old yeah kind of crappy port on the pc it's like this is the tentpole monster hunter game and that is gonna be tough to beat yeah i i will say two things one well it's gonna depend on how that pc port comes out yeah right i would say like releasing a bad port for a big game is a death wish nowadays <laughs> like don't do that makes a lot of people mad yep. so i i would hope that uh <laughs> It's I, I I have a feeling it'll be fine. Two, this does not mean that Dauntless is like doomed at all. Like a free to play Monster Hunter like that I think personally like I I think it's very good, you know, for what it's it's trying to be. There's definitely a world in which three million PC players buy Monster Hunter World, yeah. 
get into that series either for the first time or for the first time in a long time, exhaust all the monsters there are to hunt in it, and are like, man, I just want more of this style game, yeah. let's play Dauntless. Yeah. It's free to play, it's right there. Mm -hmm. I think it could very well be a, you know, all ships rise on the high tide situation. You, so exactly. Mm. On a rising tide. So, good expression. I hope. I hope I'm so hopeful happens. for it, because I think it's a great game. Uh, next question. Uh, we already answered the Starfield one from Mildos, but two. No, never mind. That's also, we have, we've answered all these. These are all about Fallout. Um, <laughs> oh, here. Harvester Apollo. Apollo Dingo, my arch nemesis. Uh, James, we all know that you secretly love the Ring City DLC for Dark Souls 3, which I gave like That's a no fine secret. score. I gave it like a, he gives me shit because he thinks I hate it. <laughs> I gave it like a 70 something maybe. Oh my God. That's yeah. hatred. Oh. <laughs> and I clearly define, you know, articulate why. Anyway, fuck that guy. Uh, which is proven by your article dedicated to the, to, in my opinion, the greatest boss in the game history, in game history, Slave Knight Gale. Uh, he's the final boss of the Ring City. Uh, but thinking Spoiler. about that made me wonder who's who your favorite Dark Souls bosses are. Additionally, who is your favorite boss in any game? That is such a... So let's, you got to dig deep for the answer. Right. The that. final question is really tough. We actually just put up a Best and Worst Dark Souls Bosses article. And yeah. Wes, do you have one that comes fresh to your mind? I mean, one of the ones I wrote about in the uh, in that article uh, that is probably somewhat recency bias, but is the final boss of Dark Souls Three, um, not the DLC. Yeah. Um, Soul was, Cinder. Was yeah, Soul. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, I just love kind of the the symbolism of that boss and the way it it morphs between kind of every Dark Souls class. It has like a move set for yeah. the warrior, for the thief, for the pyromancer, and like the, his attacks shift through those mm -hmm. as you get through that fight. Uh, it it's a, like it's it, and that's ties into the lore of how like it is basically a former adventurer, right, who has decided to keep the the cycle of mm -hmm. the flame going. Uh, whatever, I don't know my lore super well, <laughs> but okay. it, it works symbolically. It's a really fun fight. The setting for mm -hmm. it is, like, suitably Beautiful. epic, yeah. gorgeous. Uh, so I, I really love that fight. That's probably my favorite Dark Souls boss. Damn. Um, but replaying through Dark Souls 1 right now, I might get to another fight oh, that sure. I don't remember as well and, yeah. and really love. You know, it's not my favorite in Dark Souls 1, that moth, that big old moth. Moonlight Butterfly. Moonlight Butterfly. <laughs> it's, a, it's kind of a lame fight. It's pretty lame. We were trying to fight him the other day, capturing screens for... <laughs> yeah, I was capturing screenshots, and I was like, does this door go to Sif? I can't remember. Yeah. Does it go to... Let me and then Ooh. got to another door, which went to the Moonlight Butterfly, and I was playing as a thief, so I'm just like, I just have a dagger. <laughs> like, I don't think I can hit this thing. <laughs> Uh, cool design, though. Okay, do you have a favorite Dark Souls boss? I I will need to go to Wikipedia after this, and then that's fine. on work hours, purely seek to answer the question of who is my favorite Dark Souls boss. I think, uh, for me, as, as uh, Harvester Apollo says, like I don't like the Ring City DLC f for a lot of reasons, but the final boss, I think, is excellent. I'll, I'll like, keep the details mum, but it basically think of Slave Knight Gale as a... Uh, Thematically, the inverse of uh, Artorias from Dark Souls One, the the uh, the fallen hero. The, yeah, the the DLC, um, who is probably the best boss in that game, uh, easily, at least most fun to fight, uh, because Slave Knight Gale like plays very similarly and has this first stage where it's like one v one, swords and boards. Let's Me, go. Bro. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, then all of a sudden it's like, okay, yeah, I'm getting like shades of Artorius. He's got this like move where he like lunges into the sky and comes down at you. It's got the same sort of cadence and rhythm. And then like stage two, he's like, oh, level up. And then uh, starts throwing spells does he, at does you. Did he say that? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the final boss. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> super Saiyan. Uh, there's pretty much Super Saiyan. Uh, and then starts throwing these spells at you and like basically like remixes what you already know and like remixes the the best kind of boss fight in Dark Souls series history, which is like the just the one v one. I think that the the challenging one v one is my favorite. Like the beastie stuff gets a little like hard to toe to toe parse. You know, the bigger the monster, the harder it is. Or like, you know, you're fighting the camera as much as you are anything else. But uh, Slave Night Gale. I read a whole, a whole article about it. And you can find it in the. I would like to read on that. PCGamer.com. I, I think my 
favorite bosses in in history are probably uh, the boss and the end from Metal Gear Solid Three. Yeah, which is sadly not on PC, um, but those are incredible boss fights. You literally like were you took the series away from me. I was gonna say MGS. I, I would say the sneaking is secondary in that game to me. Because it's all about like just fighting the weird bosses, and uh, I, I don't know. Like, so many of them I find kind of like amusing in their goofiness and yeah. their gimmickiness, but like the end, and especially the boss, like fit into the the systems of that game so well. You know, the end is like this old sniper who's uh, just basically hides out in this giant battlefield and you have to track him down and you can like you can use goggles to like follow his footsteps Mm -hmm. you can distract him in various ways you can kind of just go in guns blazing you can hold him up and like steal his uh his like camo you can just wait for him to die or like set your system clock ahead so that he'll die uh there's like so many ways you can approach that fight that's incredibly smart it's a good time and the boss has this amazing flower field that you fight in. You can see her moving through the flower petals, and it's, it's beautiful. He's good. Oh, well, I, good game. Metal Gear Solid, great series. Uh, <laughs> my favorite boss is probably in Dark Souls anyway, so I'm not. I'm, I'm, let me skip that a bit. Do you have a favorite boss of all time, Lucas? Or is that also? I was tough? thinking about that also, and I feel like. The No More Heroes bosses are really mm. cool thematically, mm. but they're not that fun to fight. <laughs> Style over uh, substance. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to dig... <laughs> Bowser in his little clown car. <laughs> Super Mario World. No, Bow- Bowser is not fun in any game to fight. Uh, oh, even you know, Super like, Mario 64. Come on. I mean... He, get, he, does, he's the, he does that little, like, wow. That's true. Wow. That's true. Sound. It's probably uh, a Hollow Knight boss that I really love. The Dung Dung Dung, dung Knight. Defender. Dung Defender. So much fun. Ooh, so I got a good boss. I got a question in the yeah. chat from Jules. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna say this to you. Uh, Jules, your biggest fan, console gamer <laughs> Jules. Uh, sorry, Jules. For Lucas, have you been playing Rainbow Six Siege? And do you have any thoughts on the new mm. operators coming out next? So, have you been? I have not been keeping up on my Siege. Son of a gun. Uh, I've really fallen behind on that game. But I, I play games in, in fits and bursts, yeah. I would say. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, but uh, through Evan, we were chatting about the two new operators who are both defenders. Uh, mm. Apologies, Italians? I forget their names. Are they Italian? Is that the theme? <laughs> I mean, no, literally, aren't they like an Italian? I think so. Mario but and Luigi. I first, I first interpreted that as what? <laughs> <laughs> um, one has the ability to make like holograms of yeah. himself, and I saw a really good video of someone making a hologram, then standing next to their hologram in the hologram, like just aiming straight oh ahead, God. not moving. And then people, like, the concentration and the bravery you need to, when they're shooting your other hologram, to just be like... (laughs) 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 You die real quick. quick. Uh, But he got, like, a a multi-kill off just playing the part of a hologram. So that was cool. It's like a straight, like, total recall situation. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have not seen that movie. Uh, Well, there are Arnold holograms. Ah, gotcha. The other character can throw a an invincible to everything except grenades camera that can also shoot lasers and that sounds pretty fun because when you die all you really want to do is just contribute in some way to your team so having a camera that you can just zap people while they're trying to plant the bomb or whatever it's pretty fun and i feel like it gives sticky grenades which i think exist unless i'm tripping uh this operator has those i feel like no one ever uses those compared to frag grenades, but this gives you a reason to actually want to to stick a wall rather than gotcha. bounce something around a corner. And plus, like the camera, the camera game was like kind of boring, or like known, I guess. Like to yeah, some extent. people would just shoot out all the cameras in two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's cool. Like <laughs> camera plays is, is coming back probably, or at least harder to. Uh, respond to a good camera placement yeah i've been told i need to get my arse to mars i've seen the ending <laughs> a couple weeks right for that update to come out uh, yeah yeah you heard it here first <laughs> yeah yeah uh i was too busy thinking about when 
Arnold's head is inflating because uh, they have no <laughs> oxygen. And Classic scene. I mean, in space, wouldn't that just happen instantaneously? It wouldn't be like pressure building. Well, they're on the surface building. of the planet, so there's some atmosphere. Also, also it's a movie. <laughs> So I, Arnold can just do that with his I, head. That's just, not realistic, like, after seeing, like, all the I'll say this. The- uh, as a kid, I saw the scene where they used the motion-detecting gun to, like, shoot a rat, and that, like, effed me up as a kid. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. It, it was Wrong. unpleasant. Yeah. yeah. Mine was seeing uh, Robocop, like, age seven. <laughs> oh. So there's only I only saw, like, five minutes of it, but it was still a scene where... A guy gets shot in both legs, and then they like leave a grenade on his coffee table. It's the like smarmy. Oh ass yeah, guy, and he's like crawling across the room <laughs> trying to get it before the room explodes. And I was like, Jesus, said, should not have seen that. I hope that doesn't happen. I was not to prepared. Me. I saw. I was scared to death of Ronald McDonald as a kid. Ronnie, anytime he came on screen. What about Grimace? Screaming. Grimace was. Uh, <laughs> he'd scream at the side of Ronald McDonald. Yes. <laughs> I would scream and run out of the room. I don't know why. Ronald's definitely scary than Grimace. Fucking creepy. Like that's he, a cl- as clowns go, he at least has a permanent smile. As clowns go is like the same thing as saying I I'm not racist, but or I'm not this. But. It's like doesn't fucking work. Clowns, you can't listen. Do that. Listen. Ronald, I haven't seen Ronald McDonald. I feel like they. I think they backed off from the yeah, Ronald they, imagery. They sort of, rightfully so. <laughs> Maybe was, because of it. It was all over the place back in the day. He was, man. In the 90s. There was like uh, b- benches all over town with Ronald on them. Yeah. Oh, God. We definitely had one of those. God. I wouldn't say all over town, but at least one of the McDonald's. I'm sure it was just in one spot near the McDonald's. And you just always they're just, you just saw they're just it always the there. Yeah. You're just riding home from school, leg out the window. Town was pretty Ronald. small when I was growing up. <laughs> Town was not big, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll end on that nightmarish note. Uh, we're kind of out of questions. We're out of time. Uh, but it was a good show. Thanks for joining me, Lucas. Absolutely. Thank West. you so much for having me. Thank you for joining me as well to talk computer games and placate this, with, uh, this console. new <laughs> console gamer. W A S D. Gotta babysit these guys or sometime. But uh, yeah, uh, you can always watch the Piece of Gamer show, twitch.tv slash Piece of Gamer, 1 p.m. every Wednesday, Pacific time. Uh, you can catch it at youtube.com slash Piece of Gamer after the fact, usually the evening after. Uh, or go to Piece of Gamer.com slash tag slash podcast where we'll have. The show post and the whole archive of shows with links to the iTunes uh, subscription, the RSS feed, or direct download MP3s. So we're we gonna have a show next week. What is next week? The week before E3. Yes. Yes. Hopefully next. Potentially, week. we're kind of in the, uh, one final disclaimer. We're we're in the middle of a lot of things, prepping for E3 and moving out of this office. Uh, future is and PC gamers relocating to New York City, so we're not gonna have a live show. We're gonna have a live show, but not in in person we're anymore. In Take a good rooms, look at these these yeah. foam walls. Computers. Yes. Uh, Talk over the internet. Yeah, well, it'll be a uh, four, three to four faces on on your TV, in different windows. Um, and we're in the process of like making that sure that show is well done and and not just like a shoddy turnaround. And I'm very happy about it because I don't have to use this old ass equipment anymore <laughs> that always breaks and is I'm not trained to use. Uh, but if you have any feedback, like what segments you want to see, uh, if, if, if we're not talking about hardware enough, if we're talking too much about one game, if you want to... <laughs> Fort, <laughs> yeah, Fortnite. Fort, I mean, like, I used to talk shit about Tim's cards and, and, and Bo's Overwatch. Look at but, you now. <laughs> um, so any kind of feedback you want, you have for me, uh, hit me up at james at pcgamer.com. And, like, in the subject, just say show feedback or something like that. And let me know... What you would like to see in the future, especially because we'll be moving to think about the medium we'll be using. The uh, well, I guess same medium, Twitch, but uh, we'll we'll no longer be in the same room. You know, what kind of things do you think we can do that now that we'll be remote? And what kind of segments you want to see? Uh, more cards, less cards. I, I want to throw BMJ a bone here about he Overwatch saying? in 2018. Oh, you want to answer this final question? Yeah, let's do it. BMJ asks, any thoughts for on Overwatch in 2018? Take it, Lucas. I feel like that game ran its course for me. I really like that people still enjoy it to the fullest and it's still going strong. Um, But every time I try to go back, there are all these heroes I have no idea how to play or play against. 
which is the problem in any sort of living game that has characters There's added so many, to it. Fewer than like an MOBA though. I mean, yeah, they only added half a dozen. But it's a lot. It's intimidating in a way that makes you go like. I think I, I'm just going to go play something else. It's interesting in contrast to something like Fortnite or PUBG where your main interactions, like your, your vessel is like large, does uncha- not changed, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can always shoot, you can always pick things up, and you can always like in, in, in Fortnite build or in PUBG, you know, you can go prone, you do all that shit. What changes is like the shit you, you, you can find in the world and that stuff is, you know, always changing and always interesting and usually funny and not really... Not really. It doesn't really like change the the flow of competition drastically. Um, it might alter it, but in Overwatch, it's like as soon as a new hero is introduced, it's like the meta <laughs> changes, and it's like <laughs> your team is yelling at you because you're not reading patch notes. Yeah. And whereas, like in Fortnite, it's like shopping carts here. Uh, go for Let's it. All wing I, it. It, it. You just ride it and you do things in it, and it's not like this. Like you better be in a shopping cart. I'll fucking kill you. Like. <laughs> Anyway, how dare you not push me down? Yeah, the hill. push, push. You know, play the shopping cart. Uh, I think we're gonna see probably not this year, but someday we're gonna see that Overwatch campaign come out. Some yeah. kind of single player mm. co op like narrative thing. I'm thinking so. They're gonna go big into that universe, you expanding bet. out the story and all that stuff. That's what everyone was expecting from League of Legends for like the longest time, it's and true. they just have yet to true. dig into. I mean, that. doing it right, I think. Uh, is tough, and these guys, uh, these developers, have the time and resources to like really tool with that shit until <laughs> they're ready with it. But mm-hmm. I think you're right, Wes. Someday, yeah. Overwatch the movie. Overwatch the movie, the motion picture. Wow, that's exciting. Fortnite X <laughs> Overwatch. Fortnite X Overwatch. Okay. Oh man, gone too far. <laughs> we've gone too far. And with that, uh, I guess we'll see you next week. And don't forget to. Game on! (laughs) 20 great teams.